Robert Rodriguez has had a very diverse film career, and we've already been witness to his foray into making kids' movies with the cinematic masterpiece that is Shark Boy and Lava Girl. He ruined my dream dream! I did not! And I'm sure you, of course, all know the Spy Kids franchise, for better or worse. Somebody ring! One of his most obscure projects is Shorts, which is a movie that was made and released and then completely dropped off the face of the planet. It's this thing that you have really faint memories of, but only a small parts of it, making you question whether it was real in the first place. A giant snot monster? Something about aliens? A rainbow wishing rock? This can't be real, right? It was just some bizarre dream I had one time. No, it's real. It's called Shorts, and it's not very good. <laughs> the general gist of the film is that a magical wishing rock appears in a small town and is then discovered by a bunch of kids who use it for things that are stupid and dumb, as kids would, because they are stupid and dumb. Quite strangely for a kids movie, Shorts is broken up into five chapters, all of which but the final one are out of order. Memento and Pulp Fiction are shaking. <laughs> Barely anyone remembers this movie. I myself had to spend ages trying to find it because I was genuinely convinced it wasn't even real. What I am here to do today is to show you all that no, Shorts was not just some weird ass nightmare you had as a kid, it is in fact an actual product made by actual people. Please keep that in mind as we watch it together. Shorts wastes no time getting straight into it, immediately beginning with two siblings holding a very intense staring contest. And I tell you, these two are dedicated. Like, really dedicated. Maybe a little too dedicated. Of course though, adults ruin everything, and after all that, there's not even a winner. Wow, thanks mom! This was only a short hat skit before the actual movie though. Now the title cards play, and the real story begins. Obviously this bit was just so hilarious that they just had to include it. This wonderful tale is located in the small town of Black Falls, which as the movie went on, I began to suspect was actually a very well disguised insane asylum. I am sure later on you will all come to agree with me. Black Falls is dominated by the very subtle Apple allegory in the form of Black Box Incorporated, which runs the whole place because of their wildly popular products, the Black Box, which does, like, everything. Literally everything. Except be in a good movie! Okay, yeah, that was too easy. <laughs> We're then introduced to Mr. Black, the very ominously named CEO of the company. He seems like a pretty neat guy, I'd say. Our focus groups have identified our multiple uses as a drawback instead of a positive. She's right. You're fired. So are you. But... Do your spouses also work for this company? Yeah. Yes. They're fired as well. Unsurprisingly, it turns out the black box is not actually capable of doing all of the things they just advertised. Hmm, getting a little too real there, Shorts. But luckily for Mr. Black, this movie's MacGuffin device is here to save the day. The narrator explains that the Wishing Rock, which we will soon learn all about, made the events following its arrival so confusing that it will have to tell the story out of order in a series of... that. The first place we started with the narrator himself. Toby, and how he got his hands on the rock. We follow him through his morning routine, including getting to see how one goes about cleaning their braces in unnecessary amounts of detail. Thank you, movie. Of course, no kid's movie is complete without a scene with bullies, but this one looks like he's the lead singer of a mid-2000s emo boy band that's been broken up for 10 years. The main bully is the son of Mr. Black, and he also has a sister named Helvetica Black. Oh, like the font. You can tell though that Toby is already sick of their bullshit. I know why you have them beat up on me every day. I hate you because you love me. Wow, he is very forward. Yeah, you kind of deserve that, man. I guess bullying has really changed from when I was at school because apparently it's just straight up attempted murder now. And so this is how he comes into contact with the magic rock because someone ditches it at his head. Headshot. A mysterious and conveniently placed disembodied voice appears asking him to make a wish. And so he does. And he chooses to ask for friends. How exciting. Those are not friends. I'll go check on them. Wow, if this is what friends are meant to do, then I better get me some new ones. Or any friends. Any at all. Do you guys also clean teeth? Oh god, no, ew, get it away! So as you can see, within less than a day, Toby has already made his new companions into his slaves. And their next task is to serve as a hit squad against his bullies with their superior alien strength. <laughs> As it turns out, the aliens kind of want rights, so they cause a ruckus in Toby's class, causing him to accidentally do this. Ow! Sorry. You will be. Just casually gets out of her chair in the middle of class, okay. What? What? Say, Rock, you're my little friend! No! 
I feel that this has all escalated very quickly. After inflicting severe injuries upon one another, they both end up in the hospital. But who cares? The fish is okay, and that's all that matters here. We then go backwards in time to another shore, which, as far as I know, is the very beginning of the timeline, where we meet this kid named... Lugi, who supposedly is the real reason the rock started wreaking havoc across this town. Turns out it's very exciting backstory is that it fell out of the sky. Well, that's boring. Lugi and his brothers happen to find it while out on a search for treasures. Once again, its immense power is used only for the most sensible wish. I wish for a never-ending supply of chocolate bars. Uh. Things only get progressively weirder and more chaotic from there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably best if you don't ask. Now what? I don't know. Haha, <laughs> funny poop joke! I wish one of us was super smart. It is I. I don't need words to communicate. Only thoughts. This is a horror movie. They then accidentally launch the rock into the stratosphere because these kids have a collective brain cell of one. But at least we know how the rock ended up where the bullies found it. So then we jump forward in time to a kid named knows who has a germophobic scientist for a father. This time it's Toby's sister who brings the rock into the house because she's Nose's tutor or something. Toby and Loogie show up at Nose's door. What is it with the names in this movie to try and get the rock back? You haven't come to visit me in almost a year. I should break your arms. It looks like someone beat me to it. Guys, not too late to turn around and run. I just wish that his inventions worked the way they were supposed to. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Giant slime monster. Cool. Your booger's warm. Oh, giant snot monster. Fantastic. The best way they can think of to try and stop it is by nose picking his his nose and threatening to eat it since it's like family to the giant piece of snot. And, ah, bleh. The real savior of the day is the dad who shows up with a goddamn proton pack and freaking kills it. This is the worst shot in the movie. Bad booger. Okay, so now we're going back in time to see how the rock screwed with the lives of Toby's parents, which all happened because his mum just stole it from under his bed. This results in them being joined together right before a party their boss invited them to. And they have to make their way through the night and it's really it's funny and stuff because they're stuck so together. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the rock makes its way through the entire house while Toby and Helvetica do their best to get it back. What you looking for? After some more absolute insanity crammed into the next five minutes, it's ultimately resolved when Toby makes probably the first sensible wish in this entire thing. Then he just yeets the rock into space again. This poor thing is getting abused more than anyone in this entire movie. So then we skip all the way ahead right to the end, where apparently everyone is involved this time in what is thankfully the final short. Okay, so let me just clarify. The correct order is second is first, first is second, fourth is third, third is fourth, and it all culminates with the fifth, which is the last one. Ha, huh, that's not that hard actually. The narrator's just dumb. First, I wish these cats were off. I mean, having the cast off doesn't unbreak your arms. And then everyone shows up Avengers Endgame style for the movie's big climax. Only for them to all go rabbit and try and steal the rock from one another. Reverse invisibility and arms back to normal. Okay, no. You established before that they have to say I wish or the rock won't work. This boy is clearly hacking. After a lot of punching and kicking and just a whole bunch of violence, the rock eventually ends up in the hands of Mr. Black, who uses the rock for what we would all probably do with it. You must be joking. My girl, I wish I were. Oh my god, these people are so dumb. There's more chasing after it, but it ultimately ends up in Black's hands again anyway, and he uses it to become... The most powerful thing in the entire world. Which evidently is just a giant robot made out of his black box phones, which seems awfully tame considering what the rock's already been shown to be capable of. We have to take turns using the rock to stop it! Wait, why can't you just unwish his power? You can turn it back to normal in like three seconds. It's literally a wishing rock. That that would be so much easier. But I guess then we wouldn't have a montage of the kids making callbacks to previous things in the movie with their wishes. And you can really see how not powerful this most powerful thing in the world is meant to be when it gets defeated in less than a few minutes by a bunch of really uncreative children. Eventually, the hyper-intelligent baby then explains that the rock is getting exhausted because they've just spammed it with super dumb wishes until the goddamn hero dad shows up again with... What? What is that? 
and then they like summon the rock away by holding hands. It's okay, writers. Sometimes I don't know how to end my stories either. The only thing is I don't get paid for this shit. And yeah, that's about it for shorts. Oh, thank God. But be sure you're wishing for something worth wishing for. I wish this movie would end, please. I wish we were in a Hollywood movie. Yeah. Like that's gonna happen. Ha! Get it! Shorts is probably one of the most bizarre movies I've ever seen, which is exactly what I've come to expect from Robert Rodriguez and however the hell his brain works when it comes to his kids' movies. It's very cartoony, as one would expect, but perhaps a little too reliant on gross-out humor. A lot of which I really can't say appeals to anyone over the age of unborn child. Mmm, toe jam. Ew! There's some decent jokes in there, and I do like the concept of an out-of-sequence plot, which is super rare to see for a kid's movie. But that also may be the reason why so many people only remember weird parts of shorts with no particular structure to them. It's a little confusing for a target audience whose brains literally haven't developed yet. It just seems like a lot of the wishes were really uncreative for a movie about a magic rock that can do literally anything. What do we get? A giant booger, a couple of walking crocodiles, and an iPhone monster. Come on, guys. I don't know what I expected, though. Most of them aren't even wearing shorts. It was also like... A cancelled DS game that was made to tie into the movie, but it was cancelled at the last minute. Probably because it just looked so fun. Anyway, that's about all I have to say for shorts. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped restore some very confused memories for you. Although, in hindsight, it was probably best if they had stayed forgotten. In which case, I am sorry. See you guys next time. Hey, movie genie, can, uh, can the next movie we watch please be more like Sky High? Please? Yeah, rewind time. Yeah.